A good man is hard to find is here. Can't wait to start reading this book. Not what I thought. I thought I thought this book was gonna be about a girl trying to search for a guy and having a really hard time doing it. Boy was I wrong. Just scary stuff. We're going to Disney! Woohoo! She said she thought it was going to be a good day for driving. Neither too hot nor too cold. The children were reading comic magazines and their mother had gone back to sleep. Doesn't that sound like something I would do? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's passed out. And <laughs> Tennessee. <laughs> hey, you Stop. Made, you made me right, Daryl. You made me a little hillbilly. <laughs> no, it is what it says. It, it says Tennessee is just a hillbilly dumping ground, John Wesley said, and Georgia is a lousy state too. In my time, said the grandmother, folding her thin, veined fingers. Children were more respectful of their native states and their parents and everything else. What are they driving, like horse carriages? No, babe. I'm thinking that this is a family in the 40s. It sounds like the 40s, doesn't it? Middle class, you're able to take vacations. Because if you think about it, in the 30s, they had the Great Depression. This is not the kind of thing that you would see families do. They began to slap each other over the grandmother. Do you think that that's what our kids will be like on a road trip? Let's hope not. Maybe they're going to be complete angels like me. <laughs> hey. Yeah, maybe you're the grandmother said she would have done well to marry Mr. Tea Garden because he was a gentleman and had bought Coca-Cola stock when it first came out and that he had died only a few years ago, a very wealthy man. They stopped at the tower for a barbecued sandwich. A fat man named Red Sammy Butts ran it. <laughs> Red Sammy Butts. <laughs> Try Red Sammy's famous barbecue. None like famous Red Sammy's. Red Sam, the fat boy with the happy laugh. A veteran. Red Sammy's your man. A counter at one end and tables at the other and dancing space in the middle. My kind of hall. I like dancing spaces. China Berry. Put a dime in the machine and played the Tennessee Waltz. And that grandmother said that and the grandmother said that the tune always made her want to dance. She asked Bailey if he would like to dance, but he only glared at her. Doesn't that sound like your mom? Vamos a bailar, Tony. Let's dance, Tony. And what do you usually say? No. He didn't have a naturally sunny disposition like she did, and trips made him nervous. Ah, trips make you nervous too. And June Star stepped out onto the dance floor and did her tap routine. Ain't she cute, Red Sam, Red Sam's wife said, leaning over the counter. Would you like to come home with me, little girl? Okay. Oh no, she said, would you like to, oh that sounded weird. <laughs> she said, would you like to come be my little girl? No, I certainly wouldn't, June Star said. I wouldn't live in a broken down place like this for a million bucks. And she ran back to the table. Down place, yeah. What a little meanie head. And let out a combination sigh and yodel. Yodel. Yodel, yodel, yodel. Yodel, yodel, yodel. Yodel, yodel, yodel. Yodel, yodel, yodel. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. These days you don't know who to trust, he said. Ain't that the truth? People are certainly not nice like they used to be, said the grandmother. Did you read about the criminal, the misfit that's escaped? Asked the grandmother. I wouldn't be a bit surprised if he didn't attack this place right here, said the woman. If a good man is hard to find, Red Sammy said. Everything is getting terrible. The children ran outside into the white sunlight and looked at the monkey in the lacy china berry tree. He was busy catching fleas on himself and biting each one carefully between his teeth, as if it was a delicacy. Tony, you make a good monkey. They drove off again into the hot afternoon. She woke up and recalled an old plantation that she had visited in this neighborhood once when she was a young lady. She recalled exactly which road to turn off to get to it. She knew that Bailey would not be willing to lose any time looking at an old house. 
There was a secret panel in this house, she said craftily, not telling the truth, but wishing that she were. I bet you your mom tells the little white lies, wishing that they were the truth, when in fact they might not be. But don't we all though? Yeah, yes. we do. Hey, John Wesley said, let's go see it. We'll find it. We'll poke all the woodwork and find it. Who lives there? Where do you turn off at? Hey, Pop, can't we turn off there? Oh, the kids want to go? Mm-hmm. But you see how crafty the grandma is so that she made it seem like, oh, there's a hidden Safety. treasure there. And then now they're poking at the parents. Come on, Mom. Come on, Dad. We want to see it. No. It's not far from here. I know, the grandmother said. It wouldn't take over 20 minutes. So he said. The children began to yell and scream that they wanted to see the house with the secret panel. John Wesley kicked the back of the seat so hard that his father could feel the blows in his kidney. Knowing you and me, our kids are probably going to be annoying like that. Because we are... Because you're annoying? Because you're annoying and I'm annoying and our kids are just going to have the best of both worlds. They're going to be double annoying. <laughs> All right, he shouted and drew the car to a stop at the side of the road. Will you all shut up? Will you all just shut up for one second? If you don't shut up, we won't go anywhere. This is the only time we're going to stop for anything like this. This is the one and only time. The dirt road that you have to turn down is about a mile back, the grandmother directed. It, I marked it when we passed. This place had better turn up in a minute, Bailey said, or I'm going to turn around. It's not much further, the grandmother said, and just as she said it, a horrible thought came to her. The thought was so embarrassing that she turned red in the face and her eyes dilated and her feet jumped up, upsetting her valise in the corner. The instant the valise moved, the newspaper top she had over the ba basket under it rose with a snarl and pity sing, the cat sprang onto Bailey's shoulder. It's okay. The children were thrown to the floor and their mother, clutching the baby, was thrown out the door onto the ground. The old lady was thrown into the front seat. The car turned over once and landed right side up in a gulch of the side of the road. Where you go, Grandma? Oh my God, we've had an accident. The grandmother was curled up under the dashboard, hoping she was injured so that Bailey's wrath would not come down on her all at once. The horrible thought she had had before the accident was that the house she had remembered so vividly was not in Georgia, but in Tennessee. Oh, Grandma. Did you want to order some Coca-Cola? Some Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola is delicious, but it's no bueno for your health. No Coca-Cola. No Coca-Cola for us. The grandmother stood up and waved both arms dramatically to attract their attention. The car continued to come on slowly, disappeared around a bend, and appeared again. The grandmother had the peculiar feeling that the best spectacled man was someone she knew. His face was as familiar to her as if she had known him all her life. The grandmother shrieked, she scrambled to her feet, and stood staring. You're the misfit, she said. I recognized you at once. It would have been better for all of you, lady, if you hadn't recognized me. She, she just killed the whole family. She did. She did. She just, she, she, she did. just did that. She just did that. 